Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, we'll get started in about 15, 20 seconds. So um, settle in. And I'm excited to talk to you about the University of Saskatchewan today and the kind of programs that we offer uh, for our undergraduate level. And um, we'll be talking a little bit about opportunities for you, student life, things to keep in mind, like uh, what are the requirements, what are the deadlines, and, um, and we'll take questions in the end. But I also have my colleague Sandra in the chat who will be answering your questions throughout. So if you have any questions at any time, feel free to put them in the chat and whatever is left over, I'll answer them in the end. Okay, so we are have a few viewers and so I'll get started. So welcome to the University of Saskatchewan session. As I said, uh, we're going to be talking about our undergraduate programs today. So I am Shiny and I am the Student Recruitment Officer at the University of Saskatchewan. And I am joining you from the Treaty 6 territory, which is the homeland of the Métis and the First Nations um, of Saskatchewan. So we have in Saskatchewan, where is it located? It's located in Canada in the prairies. So if you were thinking about uh, in terms of flight time, we are about uh, one and a half hour from Vancouver by flight and about three and a half hours from Toronto by flight. So we are located right in the middle almost closer to Western Canada. So Canada is consistently ranked as one of the best countries in the world and currently the number one best country for quality of life. Studying in Canada will make sure that you receive an internationally recognized education. And you probably know that from uh, attending all the uh, awesome sessions today morning. So Saskatchewan has a lot to offer. We have vibrant cities, we have uncrowded parks, we have world-class freshwater fishing, we have abundant wildlife, and lots of outdoor activities like canoeing, hiking, golf, horseback riding. I came to Saskatchewan um, uh, as a university uh, student, as an international student, uh, many years ago as well. And I have continued to live here as well um, because I really enjoy uh, the open spaces that Saskatchewan offers. Saskatchewan also has an immigrant nominee program that offers you a way to immigrate to Canada through the SINP uh, program. Saskatchewan invites residency applicants from non-Canadians who want to make Saskatchewan their home. So if you do want to become a permanent resident of uh, Saskatchewan, then Saskatchewan has some great options for that as well. And our main campus is located in Saskatoon. So this is a picture of our downtown, which flows uh, right by the river. So lots of beautiful landscapes that you get to enjoy in our city. The population of Saskatoon, where our main campus is located, is about 250,000 people. We are ranked first in Canada for air and water quality, and we are one of Canada's sunniest cities with more than 2,300 hours of sunshine annually. Um, and we also, if you are lucky, sometimes you can also see the Northern Lights. So this is a picture of Northern Lights that you can see right from downtown. The city of Saskatoon, as you can see, is favorably positioned with the South Saskatchewan River winding through it. We have nine bridges which span its gentle flow linking the east to the west and we are an active city we have lots of uh, trails and natural landscapes that you can explore as a student and as you spend your time here in the city university of saskatchewan was established in 1907 we have a long history of excellence our historic main campus in Saskatoon is recognized as one of the most beautiful in Canada with plenty of green spaces, gray stone buildings and tree lined walkways. Here you can see some pictures of our campus um, in different seasons. So spring, summer, fall and winter. And we have about 26,000 students from 131 different countries. So about 14, 13% of our student population is 
international students, and we have also 14% self-declared Indigenous students as part of our student body. So the USAS family is big and growing. We come, students come from all around the world and become part of the USAS family in communities throughout Saskatchewan. Lots of students choose Saskatoon as their main campus. And we offer um, all the way from introductory classes to full degree program. We are also recognized as top 15 in Canada for research. So we are part of the top 15 universities and in research in intensive universities in Canada. So out of the 97 universities across Canada, we are part of the top 15. We're quite proud of it. We're also recognized as top five for a number of our programs, such as water resources, engineering uh, programs, public admin, agriculture programs, veterinary sciences and environmental sciences programs. So what does this mean for you as a student? Well, what this means is that you get lots of opportunities in research and internships and co-ops that are offered to you at a university that's a medium sized university and but also offers you really good quality education. So about 50% of our students uh, graduate with some kind of internship, research, or co-op experience, which is really great when you want to apply your uh, whatever you learn in your classes outside the classroom, because employment is also really important when you graduate, right? In terms of programs, we offer two types of undergraduate programs. We have direct entry colleges and non-direct entry colleges. So direct entry colleges are programs that you apply for right from high school, or if you are needing to meet those requirements for those non-direct entry colleges, and I'll talk about what I mean in the next few slides. But today I'm going to be focusing on the six direct entry colleges that we have. We have over 160 programs. So if you come visit our booth, you can ask us questions, or you can even uh, download a copy of our view book from our booth and see what kind of programs we have. So to talk about direct entry colleges, we have six direct entry colleges. So these are colleges that you can apply for if you are uh, looking for a bachelor program, our undergraduate programs, or if you're looking for certificate programs, we have some certificates available in these colleges as well. And if you are looking for meeting requirements for those non-direct entry colleges, for example, uh, dentistry, law, nursing, nutrition, pharmacy, and veterinary medicine are some options available to international students. So those non-direct entry um, colleges require you to have some kind of university classes before you can apply to them. That's why they're called non-direct entry. So depending on the program, you would have to take um, one to four years of education before uh, or of a uh, post-secondary classes before you can apply to those non-direct entry programs. So for example, nursing or requires you to have one year pre-professional study before you can apply for three years of the College of Nursing program. Similarly for nutrition, you need one year of pre-professional study before you can apply for four years in the nutrition program. So today I'll get into what the direct entry program requirements are. And if you're interested in any of these programs, uh, come chat with us at our booth and we'll talk more. Physical therapy and medicine are not available to international students. That's why they're marked gray. So that won't be available if you are not a citizen of Canada or a permanent resident. So agriculture. So when we think about agriculture, we're thinking cows, crops, farming. That is true, but there is so much more to agriculture than just that. And I have a short video to show you about how much you can do with agriculture. So you can see with agriculture, you can do so much more 
than just cows or crops or farming. So we have programs in plants and animal sciences, food sciences, feed and bioproducts, soil sciences, environment and ecology, and also the business side of agriculture. So there's a lot of different options in the College of Agriculture and Bioresources if that is something that interests you, especially environmental sciences. If that's something that is uh, interest to you, then agriculture offers a really great option for that. Then we have College of Arts and Science. It's one of our biggest colleges. They offer over 60 program options and a lot of students who are interested in doing those non-direct entry colleges often apply to College of Arts and Science to take those prerequisites before they apply to those non-direct entry colleges. I have a great video to show you about what College of Arts and Science offers. Welcome to the College of Arts and Science at the University of Saskatchewan. Our main campus is located on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We're a big college, but there's a place for you here. You have your choice of more than 50 degree programs. You can even build your own program by adding a certificate to your degree. You'll learn from leading researchers in the sciences, social sciences, humanities, and fine arts. They're working on some of the biggest challenges facing the world today, and they're here to help you succeed. We can't wait to meet you in person. Until then, check the College of Arts and Science website and social media. You'll learn how you can connect with other students, access exclusive scholarships and bursaries, and make the most of your university experience. So if you're interested in learning more about what Arts and Science offers, we do have a representative from Arts and Science in our booth. Erin would be happy to talk to you more about what Arts and Science offers. So like I said, it is the largest college on campus with 60 plus areas of study. We have a philosophy at the College of Arts and Science that no one should have a degree in just arts and just sciences. So that's why we combine arts and science programs in one college. So that gives you a more, very holistic approach to your degree. So we have options in Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Arts and Science, Fine Arts, Music, Music Education, Bachelor of Science, and a few certificates and minors as well. Um, the great thing about arts and sciences, you don't have to decide a major at the time of applying. So if you are not sure what you want to study, but you know that you want to study something in the area of arts and sciences, then that's a great option because you can decide your major after you study for a, um, a semester or two semesters and then decide what you want to declare major in. Arts and Science also has learning communities as part of their first year. So if you're a first year student, you can join a lot of different learning communities that can be really great if you want to meet uh, students who are kind of in the same mindset as you uh, take classes together and make friends. It can be really great. We have options in the first year learning community, Indigenous Student Achievement Pathways, and we also have a university transition program. So if you're someone who's under 21, um, then that's a great option for you. Um, you might have to check about international student el eligibility, but lots of great uh, learning community options, otherwise with Flex as well. Then we have the College of Education. So we have uh, lots of different programs with the College of Education, and I'll show you a um, nice video as an introduction on the power of education. I am a teacher. I profess to work collaboratively with students, colleagues, and the community towards learning and discovery in an inclusive, ethical, fair, just, respectful, and mutually supportive ways. I am a reflective inquirer and a lifelong learner. I endeavor to advance and adapt my knowledge, skills, and instructional styles to meet the needs of all learners. A 
take into consideration the diversity of values, orientations, history, rights, freedoms, responsibilities, and perspectives of all peoples in Saskatchewan, in Canada, on First Nations, and throughout the world. I continuously aspire to develop proficiency in the historical, working, and lived curriculum, and in the language of instruction. To learn and use meaningful, equitable, and holistic teaching strategies for instruction, assessment, and evaluation. And to create learning environments that encourage and support the lifetime growth of the whole student. I am committed to using my skills, knowledge, and judgment wisely. My dedication to the profession will significantly contribute to the well-being of students, families, and communities. I understand the power of education. I really like this video because it really shows you that there's so much that you can do as an educator. So if you want to be a teacher in Saskatchewan, then you do have to have a Bachelor of Education degree. So if you want to be a teacher in elementary school or in middle school or in secondary or high school, then there's uh, different options. So you apply for a Bachelor of Education degree and then you choose if you want to do early middle years or you want to do secondary uh, teaching. And then if you are not sure about what teaching area you want to be in, then early middle years is a great option because it offers a lot of different teaching areas that you can do. Secondary requires you to, um, it's not as expansive of a list of uh, what teaching areas you can do in secondary, but um, yeah, early middle years is a great option for that. Um, then we have the Edwards School of Business. So we do have a representative from Edwards School of Business in our booth today. So if you do want to learn about Edwards School of Business, then you, I would recommend you visit our booth and chat with Vanessa. So I have a quick video to show you about uh, a day in the life of an Edwards International student.
every people I met is gonna be a very important part of my lives in the future. Twenty years from now, I want my own accounting firm. You never know, right? So goals. That's the goals. <laughs> So that's a great video to show you that Edwards has so much to offer for its students. It is also accredited by the AACSB International. So what that means is you have access to better programs, better faculty, uh, students with higher overall GPAs. We have more international students and more employers recruit from AACSB schools. It is also known worldwide. So it's the most recognized form of professional accreditation and um, uh, shows that uh, Edwards is sticking to the highest standards of quality. So in Edwards, it's really great uh, if you know that you want a Bachelor of Commerce degree, but you're not sure what major you wanna do. So first year is a general business classes that you take and in second year, you choose your major. So if you are interested in studying business but don't know what area, that's totally okay. Uh, you can still apply to Edwards School of Business and then um, declare your major in second year. So we have options in finance, accounting, management, marketing, supply chain management, and human resources. We also have some combination degree programs that you can chat with your advisor about after you start your program. Then we have College of Engineering. So engineers are problem solvers. They're creative, they're curious, and they care about the world around them. Engineering is not just math and science. There is so much more to engineering. And I want to introduce you to our re-engineered first year program. So I have a little video to show you about our re-engineered first year program. You've heard what people say about first year engineering. It's too hard. It's all math. It's boring. We heard you and we've designed a new program from the ground up. It's something completely new. It's re-engineered. We looked at best practices from around the world and designed a program for the 21st century. We made first year engineering more fun. We got rid of final exams, redesigned the curriculum, and finish every day with a tutorial to help you with your homework. Rather than having five or six classes for the whole term, we'll have a series of shorter classes that will be better sequenced and aligned to enhance your learning. The new first year engineering will be taught by a team of teachers devoted to first year, skilled in teaching, and working together to have a coordinated first year program. We care about your school life balance. We added in common breaks, got rid of night classes, and every day ends at the same time, so you have time for sports and clubs. We completely scrapped the old way of grading. We're now focusing on competency and skills, not rote memorization. We want you to improve and learn, so we're giving you opportunities to redo assignments and try again. We are giving you actual engineering experience in the first year, so you know what your career will be like someday. We've designed first year engineering to enable you to have a number of employable skills by the time you finish first year. Programming skills, CAD skills, and design, helping you to get that first summer job. We've re-engineered first year for your success. There's more than one type of person who goes into engineering. There's a place for you here. So with this new program, it's really exciting. So what that means is that like as the in the video, you learned that we have no finals in first year, you get lots of hands on learning and you get opportunities to pick up all those skills that will get you that first summer job, right? Which is great because you want that. We also have a co-op option in our engineering program. So you can do a co-op internship for four, eight, 12, or 16 months. So if that is something that you do wanna do, then you can talk to an advisor after you are admitted. Um, so that's something you can apply for before. So you'll have to wait until you're admitted to apply for those. So for engineering, it's also pretty similar to Edwards and to arts and science that you don't actually have to choose a major at the time of admission. You apply and you take the first year general classes 
and then you choose your major in second year. So we have options in mechanical, civil, electrical, engineering physics, chemical engineering, computer engineering, environmental and geological engineering. You can also add a professional communication certificate in your degree. Then we have finally the College of Kinesiology, which offers, a, it is one of our most competitive colleges. So um, it is the study of the movement of the body, which is, uh, and it offers a program in exercise and sports studies. So it's a great option um, if you are thinking of career in health education or health and fitness rehab or uh, becoming a kinesiologist or cardiac rehab. So our College of Kinesiology offers practicums in the fourth year as well. And you have a very interdisciplinary approach to the study of health and uh, sports and exercise studies. So you study psychology, you study ethics, you study biology. There's a lot of different classes that you take in the College of Kinesiology. So let's talk about admission requirements. So remember, this is for our undergraduate programs. If you do have questions about the graduate programs that we offer, we ask you that you contact the department directly. And I think Sandra has been putting that link in the chat because the graduate program admissions are handled by the departments. So we aren't able to answer those questions for you. They would be the best people to answer your questions. And for undergraduate programs, we are happy to help you. So four things that we look at when you're applying for any of our undergraduate programs. First of all, you need to graduate from high school. So if you are currently in grade 11, then you will have to wait till you are in grade 12 and then you can apply. Um, and um, we also look at your admission average. So each program has their own admission average requirement. Then we also look at the subjects required for each program. And then the fourth one is English language proficiency. So when we're calculating your admission average, we're looking at five classes. Now, this may look different for different students, depending on which country and what curriculum you did. This is a general overview. I'll show you that I would recommend you go to our website, admissions.usas.ca, to find what classes we may use from your country. So we have five classes that we need, usually one math and one English. And if your lang first language is different than English, then we'll use that one. And then we'll use three other classes. So uh, we'll have natural sciences, social sciences, or fine art. And that's how we calculate the admission average. Then for admission purposes, we have two types of programs. We have uh, rolling admission, which is first qualified, first accepted basis. And then we have the competitive ranking based admission. Remember, I said that kinesiology was a competitive program. So kinesiology and education are the two competitive programs. So they have a higher admission average requirement than the other four programs. So agriculture and bioresources, arts and science, both, uh, both of those have uh, you require a 70% minimum admission average for those. And then for Edwards School of Business and Engineering, you require a 75% minimum admission average for both of them. And then for College of Kinesiology and Education, it's a little bit higher. So for education, it is um, uh, 70 to 80%, depending on whether you are a first year student or whether you are a student who has done some university classes already. And then for kinesiology, it is 80%. If you want to know about where to find the required high school classes for your country, you can go to our website, admissions.usas.ca, go to the admissions tab, go to requirements and deadlines. And then there's this drop down box where you can select the country of uh, where you're from and view the requirements based on that country. If you can't find it there and if you need any help anyway, come to our booth and we'll be happy to talk to you. Then number four, we do require everybody to meet the English language proficiency. So if you are coming from certain uh, curriculums that you did, like the IB curriculum, if you did that, then um, there, you can meet the English language proficiency through some IB English classes and your score has to meet the requirements too. There might be some exemptions for some citizens of some countries or depending on where you did your high school. So um, it's not 
a blanket answer I can give for everyone. But what I can say is that we do look at each applicant individually and we evaluate your English language proficiency individually. But if you do need to prove your English language proficiency, then you can do that by taking one of the standardized tests that we accept. So these are two of them, but there's a few more on our website. And then you can also apply to our language center. So the language center is a great option if you're someone who wants to develop your English academic English skills. You can apply for joint admission where you complete the language program first, and but you also apply for a degree program in our direct entry colleges at the same time. So what happens is you get placed in one of these four levels, and once you complete level four, you move on to your university degree. The language program is great because not only do you have a student success team and cultural awareness activities that you get to be a part of, you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one support to help you succeed at university and in your academic English. For tuition and fees, he's, he, this is some of the approximate amounts. So it really depends um, on the college that you apply for and the classes you take. Uh, but this is an approximate amount to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, it might change. It does change a little bit every year. So it might change if you're applying for next year. Then we have lots of scholarships available. So our competitive entrance scholarships, there's a number of scholarships in that. So ranging from 500 to 32,000. This is mostly the scholarships that we have that I'm sharing today is mostly for students who are applying right from high school. So it can be different if you're applying from university, like a transfer student. We do have a couple transfer student awards. But otherwise, if you don't get an entrance scholarship, remember that you can still apply for continuing student awards as you continue through your program at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, I didn't get an entrance scholarship when I applied, but I got lots of scholarships as a student. So I got like maybe six or seven uh, scholarships as a student. So I would really say that don't lose heart if you don't get an entrance scholarship. That's okay. They are very competitive, but there's so many awards. We have 13, 13 million dollars in awards that we give out to students every year. So remember that there are lots of scholarships, even when you are a student. So other scholarships, we have International Excellence Awards. We have IB Ex Excellence Awards. So if you're a student who is studying in IB curriculum, you can apply for that. We have um, Canadian Curriculum Student School Awards. So if you study in a Canadian Curriculum School, you can apply for that. Or if you study in a Council of International School or a Maple Leaf International School, you can apply for those scholarships. So these are some of the examples. So you can visit our website admissions.usas.ca to see more other scholarships that we may have. So I'm just going to end this pretty quickly. We do have residence options for you as well if you want to learn about the residence options that you can stay at then I would recommend you visit our website, livewithus.usas.ca, or even just admissions.usas.ca. You will see lots of options there. We have plenty of support services to help you through your journey as a student. So we have a career services to help you get that first job. We have International Student Center to help you through uh, any kind of troubles that you might have or any kind of questions you may have as a new international student in Saskatoon. And we also have um, access and equity services. So if you are someone who has a disability or needs some extra support, we do have those kind of services available as well. And if you are interested in the University of Saskatchewan, you can create a profile on our website, doesn't cost anything on apply.usas.ca and uh, look through what options you have. And you, that we have a lots of different events. So we have um, Q&A options, uh, program options, application workshops that we offer. So if you're interested in any of those, you can visit admissions.usas.ca and look at the events uh, option. So I'm gonna leave this here. This is our website and our contact info. So if anything, I would recommend that you take a screenshot of this or a picture, whatever, so that you have the contact information saved. 
Otherwise, if you visit our booth, you can also chat with us. Um, there's lots of questions here, but I see Sandra has been answering them really well. So um, I feel like, oh, I think my questions disappeared. Oops. Um, is there any recent question that came up that uh, you can pull up, Priya? I can't see the question anymore. Yep, um, we can go through some new questions that are coming in. So there's some questions about scholarships. Okay, awesome. Thanks for asking about scholarships. So if you go to admissions.usas.ca, we have a scholarships page where you can look at the different scholarships that we have. So we have scholarships that may depend on where you live or where you graduated from and where, um, where you did your high school from. So lots of different options for scholarships. Um, and each scholarship is different in its eligibility requirements. So if you explore a little bit more, you can find that. And once you submit your application, you get access to a student portal. It's called PAUSE. And with that PAUSE account, you can apply for um, any of the scholarships that you are eligible for. Okay. I think the other question was, how long does it take for an application to be reviewed? Is that right? Uh, so I will answer that. So that's a great question. Um, it depends on um, your application and what program you're applying for. So if you're applying for a competitive program, then you we will wait till all the applications are in and all the students will be ranked and then we'll uh, send out decisions. If you're applying for our rolling admission program, so arts and science, agriculture, Edward School of Business or um, engineering, then uh, we usually offer them on a first uh, applied, first qualified basis. So I would say if you're thinking of applying to the University of Saskatchewan for starting in September, now is a great time to apply. Um, and then once you submit your application, you can upload your transcripts and then we'll start the processing. So it usually starts right after you have submitted all your required documents. Okay, I don't know why my questions keep disappearing. Is there another question that came up, um, Priya, that you can? Yes, so there's a couple of questions um, about language proficiency, and if you could speak a little bit more about the testing. Yeah, for sure. So um, for English language proficiency, there is a few options. Um, Obviously, we'll look at your high school, and if you have done um, high school in English, then we will consider that, but that's something that we consider on an individual basis. So I personally cannot evaluate that um, before you apply, so that will be evaluated once you submit your application. But the other option, if you do need to provide English proficiency, is priority, providing a test. So there is IELTS that we'll take, we'll take a TOEFL, we're also taking Duolingo, and we take a few other uh, tests as well. Otherwise, we also have our language center if you're interested in um, completing uh, English for academic pro uh, purposes program. So if you're someone who wants to develop your academic English skills and don't meet the requirements uh, of English language proficiency, and this is a really great option as well. Okay. I think I can take one more question. Hmm. Another question from Anonymous, is the, a three years bachelor's degree acceptable for a master's program? That's a great question, thanks. I am not an expert in graduate programs and I recommend that it would be something that you would have to check on our website, which is grad.usas.ca. And I believe Sandra has shared that in the chat as well. In the grad.usas.ca website, you can see 
admission requirements and what we require. If, um, I think usually you need a four-year degree. We don't usually accept three-year degrees, but you'll have to check the website. Okay. Um, I think, is there another question that you see, Priya, that came up? I think um, Sandra's got most of them. Okay. So don't awesome. see any new ones coming in right now. Great. Oh, um, and someone's asking, I see, about the PhD program. So similarly to what I just said, um, I don't. I'm not an expert about our graduate program. So if you are interested in our graduate programs, I um, uh, recommend that you contact uh, the department that you are interested in applying for. And as Sandra has put in the chat as well, the links to our uh, graduate studies website. So the department is the one that makes all the decisions and sets the requirements and deadlines and everything. So they would be the best people to answer your questions for graduate programs. So if anybody has any questions for our undergraduate programs, I can definitely answer those today. Okay, um, I think, I don't think we're getting any more questions, so maybe we can end. Okay, I just saw a question about uh, medicine. So yes, you can apply to College of Medicine if you are a permanent resident or a citizen of Canada. Um, so that's definitely something you can do. As an international student, you won't be able to because we have only one medicine, College of Medicine in the entire province. So we do give priority to uh, Canadian citizens and permanent residents. Um, okay, that's a really great question about accommodations off campus. So I would say that accommodations off campus are quite easy to find in Saskatoon. They're not really hard to find. There are a few websites that you can check out that have those off campus accommodations. And as an international student, if you do need help providing off-campus accommodations, we don't provide that as a service, but we can refer you to places where you can find that information. As an international student, and as uh, myself, and as someone who lived in residence for four years of her degree, I would recommend living in residence because um, you live with other students. You, have, you can make friends easily because you're attending the same classes. But when you live off campus, there are chances that you're living with someone who um, you might be living alone or you might not be living with other students. And that can get kind of lonely when you're a new person in the city. And uh, there's a question about paying fees for co-op. So co-op um, depends on which program, if it's like for engineering or for Edwards. Um, I think that is something that you can discuss with an advisor after you apply for admission because there may be fees associated associated with a uh, permit that you may need to apply and then there's some some application fees but I am not entirely sure what exactly it is so that's something a college advisor can help you with once you are admitted as a student and I'll take the last questions um, because we are close to our time uh so as an international student i want to study biomedical sciences can i apply for medicine after that i can apply for medicine so that's a great question so for college of medicine actually if you are an international student you can apply you can't apply i mean so if you are a permanent resident then yeah for sure but for college of medicine to talk about the requirements you need a four-year degree it doesn't matter what the four-year degree is in as of right now, but maybe in five or six years, that might change. But as of right now, it doesn't matter what the four-year degree is in. They do recommend some background 
in our medical sciences or some kind of sciences. Biomedical sciences is a really great option if you do want to do that. A lot of students choose that option when they're thinking of uh, medicine in the future. So that's a great option for you. Okay, um, I will end this session now. We are at the end. So enjoy exploring the booths and um, come to our booth if you have any more questions.